You! Are you ready for your favorite Vanguard content creator to reveal a new card from Ping Collection 2022? Because he's not. He's not ready at all. Welcome back to Yellow Card Vanguard. Premium Collection reveal season is finished, and with it came some great, not so great, and Royal Paladin. Now, some of these strides are very easy to use. Simply read the card and perform the effects. But some of these have more niche applications and subtle ways to optimize them. In this yellow card combo video, I run over some of the more niche strides and how or when to use them. I hope this video provides good insight and helps broaden your mind to some of these new cards. But before we get into the juicy bits, a message from our beloved sponsor, Strictly Broken TCG, where you go for your Bushy Road card game needs. Are you ready for season 2 of your favorite idol anime? DLBT02, Lyrical Monasterio, it's a new school term, is now out for pre order on Strictly Broken TCG. Looking to make some new friends or show off how powerful you are? Look no further than SBTCG for your pre orders to be the first in line to get tickets to Kyrie's new live. Don't forget to use my discount code SBTCGTOKU for 5% off your order. Once again, that's SBTCG. Toku for 5% off. And now, back to the video. So, to start things off, I'll start with my bias. The new Royal Paladin Stride, Stun, Divine, Knight, Eurogias. Now, I was stunned at how mediocre this card was, especially when a card like Crystal Luster exists. At the moment, there are two or three paradigms of Royal Paladin decks for premium, Jewel Knights, Blasters, and Alt Miles. All of these decks use their V Premium boss unit as their heart, in which case, Crystal Luster will always be better. Crystal Luster on Salome is 2 quad drive swings and a board reset. Crystal Luster on MLB is quad crit force marker generation. So what does Eurogias provide? Eurogias would, in theory, be a first tread that would help set up your board or hand, albeit very low quality, since they are blind draws. And the force marker generation isn't awful. If we already have 5 valid calls in hand, I posit that you don't call all 5 cards. Instead, what we will do is after paying cost for stride and going into said card, Eurogius, instead of calling all 5 cards to hand, we can call 3 cards. So we can call down our Wingle Brave. Uh, let's call another Wingle Brave just for posterity's sake. And sure, Blaster Friend Barco here. At this point then, what we could do is we could attack with the Barco unboosted, then we can go into Eurogius' attack, using his skill to then counterblast one, flip something up on the G-zone, and we have three rearguards, so we can draw three, call three, so we can call one, two, and we can wipe Bark Gull to call Star Call Trumpeter here. Now, obviously, these aren't ideal calls, but that is the risk you run when you play with a card like Eurogius, which basically draws and calls from the top deck. Maybe with a bigger hand, you have a better selection of cards to call from, but at that point, why aren't you just going to Crystal Luster? Now, off of this skill, we did manage to get our full field, so we do have our five rearguard requirement. We can go ahead and give a force marker to this new column that we've made. After all is said and done, what you can see is that we did manage to draw two cards from our initial starting hand. We did manage to reset our board in a sense, meaning after our drive checks here, one, two, three, uh, draw trigger, sure. We can then swing, swing, and that ends our turn. Now, as you can see, Sometimes you can even combo off as well. Like maybe let's say that we started only with the Barco in hand and we managed to draw into a Ryu. All of a sudden that's the blaster combo and because of that force marker generation, you have a stronger attack. But once again, why don't we just go into Crystal Luster? Nonetheless, hopefully that extra force marker helps scale your future turns. Just be aware that Eurogias has an inherent anti-synergy with these soul in crits as the timings will clash with each other. 
you will have to have 4 rearguards including said crit to resolve everything fully. Next up is Holy Seraph Zakkyo, the new Angel Feather Savior and Stride. What I like about Zakkyo is that she is dual moded, but also everywhere in between. From 6 drives to 5 drives 10k front, 4 drives 20k front, or just 30k front. She does it all. This first showcase will be using her as a first strike for farming. In this showcase, ideally as you went through the motions of getting from grade 1 to grade 2 to grade 3, eventually you would have used your heal guardian to guard with. Then as we go into our grade 3 turn and we are presented with the opportunity to first stride, we can drop our turn and we can use this grade 3 heal guardian to pay cost for stride to go into Zokkiel. From here on, we can use Zokkiel's skill to discard a trigger that we have in hand. Then, completing the resolution, we are going to choose 3 cards from our drop zone, trigger, trigger, trigger. So now that we put 3 triggers into our damage zone from Zofgale's skill, we gain 3 drive checks. Then with Zofgale, we will have to resolve the rest of the ability, so we will now heal 3. 1, 2, 3. So we've left the heal guardian in here for G guard plays. Because if we do have a Yafkiel in our hand, we can go ahead and use Yafkiel to go ahead and grab that heal from the damage zone and damage ourselves one, effectively being our 7th drive check of the turn. Basically, with this, we are able to recycle heal guardians that we use in the early game to be able to G-guard with, which is a very strong defensive play now that Angel Feathers has a G-guardian that just heals you one. Well, after all is said and done, we now have 6 drive checks, so we can just swing, 1, 2, 3, power crit, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's a lot. That's a lot of hand. And then we can just finally attack with Yoff Kale. That is what our first strike turns might look like if we have a really healthy hand. Uh, if we have any normal units that we have to like discard for her cost instead of having an extra trigger, so be it. 10k to the front row, nothing to scoff at, we still get Pentadrive. This second showcase uses her as an endgame stride to try and go for game. One of Angel Feather's age-old tools and strategies was using Surgery Angel to RNG more attacks, but those attacks would never be large enough to warrant any praise. Now with Zofkiel, that 30k buff can come in huge. Swing with your rearguards boosted by Surgery Angel and get some sick rescue checks for another set of attacks. And once we've expanded our rescue checks, we can go for the Vanguard Swing and hopefully find some more stand triggers for another large set of attacks. Let's take a look at how it turns out. So in our hand, we've got our 3 Surgery Angels and a Grade 3 to discard for Stride. We'll draw for turn and discard said Grade 3 to Stride into our Zofkiel. Now you may notice that we do have 7 cards in damage. Very strange, shouldn't we have lost by now? But somehow we managed to make it to GB5 and stride into Basa Sail, so our lose condition becomes 8. Uh, what's cute about this is now, because we have 7 cards in damage zone, our Hygienist Angel gains 35k already, making her 42k. What we can do now is we can call down our 3 Surgery Angels, and use a Zofkiel skill to discard 1 and put 3 normal units into our damage zone. It doesn't matter really which ones, because we are just going to heal 3 normal units out again on resolution. 1, 2, 3. 3 normal units have been put in, so that's a plus 30k buff to our front row, and then we heal 3. So, after all said and done, our Tarel is sitting at 55k, our Zafkiel is sitting at 57k, and our Hygienist Angel, including that 35k from the damage, is sitting at a very hefty 72k. Holy shit. So we're going to start off with an attack from Tarel, boosted by Surgery Angel. This will be 55, boosted by a 4, so 59 to their Vanguard. Same as 58k. Magic numbers! We're going to use Surgery Angel skill to counter Blast 1, send it back to the deck, and give it a good shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Perform our rescue check, healing this off, and we get a stand trigger. Boom. Uh, power doesn't really matter. Our power columns are huge. May as well try and even them out, so we can give that extra 5k to the Tarel and swing with her again for 60k. Then, we can swing with Hygienist Angel. This was a 72k, boosted by a 4, 76k to their Vanguard. Using Surgery Angel skill to counterblast 1, send it back to deck, give it a good shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Perform the Rescue check, heal 1, and damage ourselves. Then trigger. We're going to once again stand that Hygienist Angel, and swing again for a very nice and hefty 77k. 
on our last attack, we can swing with our Vanguard and do three drive checks. So we didn't put any triggers, we didn't get any extra drive checks, but our deck is fairly compressed. We get did get an extra crit, so we can go ahead and give a crit to one of these lovely ladies. This is the bigger one, so we're going to give it all to Hygienist Angel, making her an 87k with crit, assuming that we've given the stand power trigger to her. Then we can use our last Surgeon Angel here to counter blast one, send it back to deck, and for one very large attack, we get that stand trigger off the rescue check, and we can swing one more time with the Hygienist Angel for an incredibly large number with that crit. Hopefully it closes out the game. That was the Angel Feather Stride, and now we look at the next AF clan being Aquaforce. This is Furyargus Dragon, the new Aquaforce Stride. Furyargus has some very big shoes to fill between Alexandros and Genbolt Dragon. Genbolt has the highest raw plusing potential out of any first stride in the game, and Alexandros has Aquaforce's scaling and endgame potential. So where does Furyargus go? Well, somewhere smack dab in the middle. It doesn't do anything amazing, but it's very good at being meh. And in certain matchups where Genbolt's field requirement will not be met, such as Narukami or Kagura with their defensive G-Guards, and it's too early for Alexander's to provide any sort of pressure, I think we can appreciate Furyargus' existence here. In a cute sense as well, Furyargus does provide a unique kind of scaling that makes Pursuit Assault, larger, and scales with attacks. With as little commitment as possible, you are still able to get three attacks that scale up in power and actually kind of nicely. Uh, it's going to be something as simple as this. So we can strike for turn using a copy of a grade 3 to go into Fury Argus Dragon. Then we can call our Pursuit Assault onto the Axel Circle and he is already standing base at 19k. So we're going to swing 19k after their Vanguard and then Using Fury Argus skill after battle, one, two, three. We can counter blast one and flip a unit face up. Then we gain an Axel marker. Boom. Get a draw because of Axel two. Then uh, we can up to the number of G zone units that we have face up. So being one, we can send that many number of rear guards. So we'll send our pursuit assault. Then following its effect, we can choose up to one of our rear guards and move it to an empty axle circle. So we're just going to go ahead and give that Pursuit of Suit Assault the quick shuffle and it gains 10k. Now that we have two axle circles, now that we have two axle circles, our Pursuit of Assault is sitting very pretty at 19k, not to mention for your artist's plus 10k buff to turn it to a 29k, which as we increase in power, these are very good orders of attacks with very low commitment. Boom. What I can appreciate about Furry Argus is that it may present a new wing onto Aqua Force outside of Alexandros, and that is to spam Axel Markers and then use Valios' Power Lock and just overwhelm your opponent with a myriad of attacks. Next up on the docket, Omniscience Dragon Caladrius. Great Nature's new professor with tenure and probably teaches at the Yellow Card Cram School. A lot of people initially liken Caladrius to Balaro, but long are the days when Balaro will be considered the one and all stride that it used to be. Yes, Balaro is a great first farming stride, but Caladrius has a very covetic guard restrict that I like to call Triple Door. This makes Caladrius a very strong finisher stride after we've collected our guard pieces, and as we know with the double spangled G-Guard play, it's pretty easy to collect pieces. So the combo looks like so. We've got our talented Rhinos, which will be the one doing all the heavy lifting this turn. We have Two, three, four copies of Amazing Professor Big Belly this will be one of the ways of restaying the talented rhinos, as well as Crayon Tiger, a very coveted friend in the Great Nature Clan. Another way to restand our talented rhinos. We've obviously got our boosters for the Crayon Tiger as well, and assuming that we are going for the kill this turn, we've got five open counterblasts to play with. Let's go ahead and go into our stride. We'll play cost for stride with our heal, because we're looking to end the game, we don't need heals where we're going. We are going to go into Caladrius, and then we are going to call our boys out, assuming that we have two Axel markers here. One Talented Rhinos onto the Axel, we can put Big Belly onto the Axel, and we can have another Axel, <laughs> put that other Big Belly on, and then on our other rear card circles, Boom Boom Crayon Tiger, as well as Mini Bellies. Uh, let's pretend we just whiffed on both our mini bellies. Then we can use Caladria as a skill to go ahead and flip up the G unit. And all of our front row will gain 10k. 10 here, 10 there, 10 there, 10 there, 10 there. Uh, just a rear guard. So Caladria does not get power, but Caladria will not be doing any of the heavy lifting. It is all Talented Rhinos. So why is this 10k so important? Talented Rhinos is 11k. Becomes successful at 20k. 
so that 10k buff immediately makes him successful. Now, when he's successful, Talented Rhinos gains an extra 4k, pushing him to 15k, 25k, and on the XL2, gains an extra 5k to hit 30k. And 30k just happens to be that threshold that Caladrius needs to provide that guard restrict. So Caladrius has that triple door effect. Your opponent must guard from hand three or more cards at the same time. And Talented Rhinos has its own guard restrict built in, being no grade zeros. So combine those two different guard restricts together and your opponent either has to take the damage or have like a really strong G guard. Regardless, let's go ahead and take out what a turn would look like. We will swing first with Talented Rhinos at 30k. This has the grade 0 guard restrict, but not the triple door yet. Then we can attack with Caladrius, it uses its skill on attack to counterblast one and restand one of our rear guards with 30,000 or more. That would be Talented Rhinos. Now, for this turn, Talented Rhinos gains the effect that when it attacks, your opponent has to. So, doing the drive checks here, one. Any crits that we get can go on the Rhinos. This just makes ending the game that much easier because it is harder to guard this unit with two crits. Second drive check and third drive check. After that's all said and done, we can now swing with Taunted Rhinos one more time. Let's say because of that crit is now 40k with the crit with that triple door and grade zero guard restrict. Next, we can swing with one of our amazing Professor Big Bellies. Uh, amazing Professor Big Belly has a success 20,000. It is 11,000 and luckily for us, Caladrius gave it 10k, making it successful. And thus, at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, if it was successful, counter blast one, then the Rhino. Then, we swing with Rhino again. This is another attack with that big guard restrict. Then, obviously, we have another big belly. Boom. Successful. End of battle. Counter Blast 1. Restand. Attack with it again. Another attack of guard restrict. Then, we have our two Crayon Tigers left. It's just going to be the same thing all over again. Just with the Crayon Tiger instead of big bellies. So, the Crayon Tiger, when it attacks, while boosted, we can Counter Blast 1 to restand the Towns for Rhinos. Give it that extra 4k as well as the ability that end of turn, we draw a card and retire that unit. Then... We can attack one more time with the Talented Rhinos. And for our last restand, another stack of Crayon Tiger. Counter Blast 1, a restand, giving it that 4k and the end of turn retire draw. And last attack with Talented Rhinos. Then at the end of turn, all of our units are going to get retired. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then Big Belly. When my rear guard is retired by a card ability each battle phase or each end phase, I can draw a card. So I'll draw five. Then the two stacks of Crayon Tiger here, I can also just draw another two. Uh, so not only does Big Belly in conjunction with Caladrius provide a lot of draw to the deck, which then has defensive power, it also provides that crazy offensive power as well. I believe, if my math is not mistaking, that was five attacks from the Talented Rhinos with that triple door effect. This is actually kind of insane, and I'm looking forward to what Great Nature can do in this upcoming format. Finally, the last stride that I want to highlight. Neo Nectar Stride. Flower Princess of Compassion, Ladislava. Ladislava is a stride that most people were not too hot on when it came out, but I saw a metric fuckton of potential, especially with Neo Nectar being in the Stoikea Nation. Why does this matter? Though not available just yet. Stoikea is the nation that boasts a lot of unique orders, and Ladislava's first skill does not state that you have to particularly search units. You can superior call a unit and of the same grade search for an order. Some orders I have my eyes on is Death Inviting Black Magic. It's actually just a pot of greed if you manage to get four cards combined. We have Whales Melt in the Sound of Rain as a strong tempo play to recycle some Neo Nectar units as well as Nectar of Sensationalism if we can turbo our drop zone to 15 giving a unit that we're going to restand off of Lotus Lava skill, 15k and a crit. So the combo that I want to showcase with Lotus Lava is her usage with Cecilia Reverse. The end result is something like 6 or so attacks with a 3-2 Drive Vanguard. We'll start by striding into Lotus Lava, and then we can have a Cecilia Reverse on the rear. Then we can use Lotus Lava skill to discard one, and we can choose our Cecilia Reverse. And from our deck, we can search for two cards of the same grade, call one to rear, and add one to hand. So, I am going to get a Cecilia Reverse and a Whale's Melt in the Sound of Rain. I'll add the order to my hand and call the Cecilia Reverse here. Now that a Cecilia has been called from the deck, its ability is live. Uh, let's go ahead and just make another plant token in the back here, our beautiful plant tokens. We can now swing with our two Cecilia Reverses. 
And then swim with Lotus Lava here. When Lotus Lava attacks, we can Counter Blast to stand two of our rear guards with the same name, that being Cecilia Reverse. And do our drive checks. One, two, three. Ignoring the triggers just for the combo sake. Then, what we can do is on this one, we can swing with this Cecilia Reverse. And with its ability, because we've now stood one of our front row units, we can counter blast one and lock one of our standing rear guards. Then we can stand the unit that attacked. And because we chose to restand our front row, and then we could also lock our front row. Instead of standing it, we can now bind it and rewrite it over. Thus getting us another force marker. But more importantly, getting us another vanguard swing. So now that Cecilia reverses on the vanguard swing, we can use her on attack skill to counter blast one. We can wipe our tokens. And off the top five, call two unit cards to rear. And we now have an open column that we have to keep on the pressure. Oh, that's not what I was supposed to do. I'm supposed to look at top five. One, two, three, four, five. So not amazing calls, but we do have Martina here, which gains 5k in a crit when called out of deck. So this is 28k with a crit. And then we can also call a Sol here. And if we have an extra counter blast, we could force a trigger using its skill by wiping that other token there. But for the sake, we'll just call the Sol here. So we'll do our drive check here at 1, 2, and attack from Martina to end the turn. So not as high power as a lot of like other combos, but it does show the potential that this deck has at the moment using Musketeer as a base and using Cecilia's reverse skill in conjunction with the fact that Lattice Lava is able to stand a front row rear guard. This could get us an extra vanguard attack. This could search us some very strong orders should they come up. And I hope that this deck just gets better and better as more cards restore Kea come out. In this video, I went over five of the more interesting niche, unique strides of Premium Collection 2022 and took a deeper look at situations and potential combos you could do with them. I hope it was insightful and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about the video down in the comment section down below and please do not forget to subscribe to the channel as well as hit the notification button. Every little bit helps. In any case, this has been Toku from Yokard Vanguard and I will see you in the next video. Toku out.